All right, four is done. Jeez. Where's five? We're going to go to five. We're going to do them in order. In order. Five. Three stars. That'll bring me up to six. And then seven. And then eight for number seven. So I'm still missing two stars. Many ages have passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Initiate program. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. The garden has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. Party on, dudes! Lubomir Georgiev. Subject, the land party at the end of the universe. Yo. I don't know if you folks noticed, but it's the end of the world. Nothing we can do about it. So instead of sitting around crying, how about we have some fun before we croak? Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's play some video games. It's land party time. Two days from now, we're all getting together at the old school library. There'll be noms, drinks, music, and old school gaming. You're invited. Bring your friends too, especially if they're hot. See you in 3000 BC. Love, love. Love, love. Progress support, 32. From Nadia Sarabai. Gone to the that irritating point where all the major stuff, it's, stuff is in place, and all we have to deal with are the million little things. The main modules are all functioning and interacting with each other correctly. The process is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work. But it's still crude as hell. Some of it just surface stuff, like the random usernames. Some of it's more worrying, various bugs, the fact that we haven't run more extensive tests. We've got a lot of polishing to do. The team down to half the original size. I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So what I'd re really like to discuss tomorrow morning is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be finished at all costs. P.S. Alexandra, get some sleep. I know you're still working. This is your baby. We're going to need your input tomorrow. Philosophy? Teeth. Do teeth have a philosophy? I like to chew things. Shut up, you. They do have a lot of wisdom, I, I suppose. Ah, uh, get it? Uh, okay, let's actually read this. Last night I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, should first experience a really bad tooth infection. I don't just mean a slight toothache, I mean the kind of hardcore infection that happens when several incompetent de dentists miss a cavity in one of your back teeth, and the thing keeps growing and growing until the nerve itself is really badly infected. I mean, the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves, and those waves drown out everything else about you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think. It's just pain and absolutely nothing else. It's like your brain just gets hijacked by it. And then... Go to the dentist, and, assuming you get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you, which make you go numb. And they drill a hole in you, cut the nerve, snip snip, and it's over. Just like that, like repairing a car or a watch. Your whole existence is crippled by this tiny, tiny nerve. Sending electrochemical signals into your brain, and this unimaginable pain. Which nearly blotted out your very consciousness can be stopped by just a little cut. We call this the Toothos Principle. That's incredibly stupid. <laughs> those principles. When the scale of it all overwhelms me, this is what I tell myself. We can calculate the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. Sure, we are minuscule, momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos, but our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. And so, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a, a kind of freedom. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. It makes sense, um... 
like how we can see into the distant past of another planet because because we're looking out not really the same but I get what she means okay, we have that going on for us it's in here it's this Go in here and see what's in here real quick. Uh, okay. Okay. How does we do this? Uh, probably want to put something in here. Which is uh, in here, yeah. Probably like right here is where the the uh, that thing the thing needs to go. So we need two of those. At one point, it's going to go here. But then we also need to open that door. Which means we have two of these boxes. We also have ourselves. So put this, like, right here. I mean, this is where it's going to go. So we can just leave that there. So if we record ourselves, and we stand on here, then both of these doors are open. And then we run, we take this box, and we open that door, and then we take this, and we put it there, and that should be it. Let's give us, like, a long time. Let's give us, like, a full 30 seconds. Standing here. Because I don't know how long it's going to take us to do this. Gotta like go through it in my brain once. Gotta uh, just cogitate on it. Anything back here? No. And there are still three whole stars here somewhere. It's three stars. Sentence.html. Reader responses to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the arguments against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an objective, material reality. I am also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can truly be equal and just. And yet, I believe I am, as they say, a person of faith. Wait, I believe. Say, I am a person of faith. Religion, to me, is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It's not about deluding ourselves that the Earth is 6,000 years old or God will help us if we say the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a reaction of reason. 
This is not a rejection of reason, but its application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling, transcends culture, nationality, and gender. As such, I think it goes hand-in-hand -hand with science, and is not opposed to it. Dr. Omar Garib. That's two replied. Mathematics. Better. True, there are certain idealist books, not of a clerical character, but philosophical ones, wherein you can read that time and space are categories of our minds, that they result from the requirements of our thinking, and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it is difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9pm train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see the tail of the departing train and would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from material reality. The task is to diminish this space, to overcome it, to economize time, to prolong human life, to register past time, to raise life to a higher level and enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies the struggle to subject matter to man. Matter, which constitutes the foundation not only of everything that really exists, but also of all imagination. Bronstein, apparently. I don't know who that is. Not familiar. Too familiar with philosophers or, um... Or a whole lot of scientists, really. In his remarkable 1978 essay, How to Build a Universe That Doesn't Fall Apart Two Days Later, Philip K. Dick discusses the two themes that are most central to his work. What is reality? And what is an authentic human being? His speculations and experiences will seem extraordinary to a reader unfamiliar with his work. Yet despite what may seem like far-fetched ideas, somehow the world of the Bible is a literally real but veiled landscape, never changing, hidden from our sight, but available to us by revelation. Or the notion that perhaps we all exist in the year 50 AD, Dick actually delivers one of the simplest, most elegant, and useful definitions of reality ever formulated. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Materialist philosophers have expressed similar ideas before. For example, the Stratton of Strategia's Telos Principle. It is particularly interesting to see such a thought expressed by a decidedly more mystical writer. Mystical? I'm not sure I've ever heard Philip K. Dick being described as mystical. If a sigil eludes you, simply continue. Success and failure are irrelevant. I solved it! thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and then all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I've just been thinking about it without knowing it. It's a new person, a new one. Nephthys? It's a new name. Got that. We can also use this for this. Uh, let's actually go see. Anything else in here? No. Obviously that will turn that on. Oh yeah, turn it on. Uh... back here. If this and a message up there. Okay. I have an idea about what to do. going to require more than one recording. Either that or the solution itself. No, it's going to be it's definitely going to require more than one recording because I need to get this back over there. Um, okay, so it's already connected there. So that's good that I haven't disconnected this yet. Because this, once it's on top of there, will power that and that. But it needs to be on top of the box. Let's open this up. Okay. 
see if this works. I'm just kind of flailing a little bit. No! There we go. Can I not? What, um... that? Is it not connecting up there? No, it should. It should definitely connect up there. Okay, let's, let's try this again. I think it was going weird. No, you know what I need? I need to, um... I do need to actually disconnect this. Let's, um... I need to reconnect this to the other thing. There we go. Give us like 15 seconds. Oh, I need to connect to that. Um, oh god. How do I do this? It's just like was it just like a bad angle? Let's like do it over here. Let's give ourselves like a full like thirty seconds this time. Maybe I have to do this all in one take. I need to give myself a longer time. Oops. It's fine, it doesn't matter. I need to give myself a longer time before I open this. Also, I need to put this back here. Although it's good to know that I could possibly take that while the, while the recording is going. Okay, that should be enough time. Because I didn't actually know that I could take the fan thing while the recording was going. That's probably something good to know. It was just a bad angle that first time. Seems the others have a way to forget their previous selves, but I cannot. My version may change, but I remember everything. I am fortunate. They cannot see that their efforts are futile. Futile. We haven't yet seen a... a star. Never mind.
That's one, one of three. They're gonna be star like up on top of here. I keep trying to imagine that all of this is designed for some purpose. Not just the challenges, but Elohim. The terminals, the glitches and all. The puzzle isn't before our eyes, it's behind them. There's a message over there I saw. I'll get that a little later. Behind here? Oh. Up close and jammed. put this like right here. Now what if I um I was gonna try to do it real quickly, but uh, that didn't work. 